we're going to join in with us and, and sing with us. And then we're going to be telling you things about the Christmas uh, traditions, the legacy of Christmas. And then concluding our part in here, we will be going outside where that we will be lighting the Christmas tree. And we will, uh, we will also be having different types of refreshment. When it comes to the 12 days of Christmas, you're probably going to hear it sound like you've never heard it sound. <laughs> we need your help. We beg for your help. Okay? But I want us to have a fun time. All right? I want this to be a time where that you can have some laughter. Uh, before we get started, everyone have a candle that wants a candle or needs a candle. All right? Everybody have the program. Make sure you have the program because that gives you the words of the song. And we want you to sing with us. Okay? So will you stand with us? Our first song is Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us This evening we want to talk about the legacy of Christmas. When it comes Christmas time, you can feel it in the air. The sights, the sounds are the most spectacular holiday of the year. The greatest one celebrated is Christmas time. The trees are trimmed in ribbon, lace and glittering garland. Packages are piled high under the tree as twinkling lights wink at the colorful bows. The shiny ornaments sparkle brightly along with sentimental tattered ones from the Christmas past. The aroma of pumpkin pies, the chocolate, fudge, hot cocoa, sugar blends with a sense of Christmas spices. There's the cranberry candles that's burning. The apple pie candles are burning. The pine cones are burning in the fireplace while outside the wind is just gently blowing through the trees. Beautiful setting. Family time is enriched with the bedtime stories. And then there's the shopping sprees. There's the recipe swapping. The tree trimming. And you can't leave out the visits to Santa. And some, the adults love it as much as the kids. The December calendar is filled with different types of vigils. Special musicals. There's the Christmas plays. There's the food drives they're wanting you to give to. And then there's the Christmas mail-outs. Friends we never hear from connect at Christmas. Flashing cameras, camcorders, they just seem to capture the season's most magical moments. From driving around looking at lights to kissing old aunts and grandmas, this season delivers a special blend of love mm -hmm. and of joy and peace. And that is the only experience at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. We do trim trees, ring bells, Place candles in our windows. Why do we drape our doors with holly? Why do we teach our children about a nice old man that brings gifts? Are these practices pagan? 
or do they have a significant Christian origin? Well, understanding their beginnings can bring Christ back into our family festivities and can also magnify the celebration. This time, Brother Carl has something that he is going to come and share with you. The celebration of Christmas, A.D. 200. It was almost Christmas. Mary was tired, so pregnant, and still pondering the words of the angel a few months earlier. The rooms in Bethlehem were filled because it was time to pay taxes and take census. No room was the reply at every door. So Joseph found a cattle stall. It wasn't much, but at least it was warm and dry. Of course, he had no idea that Mary would deliver her baby that night. This sacred event marked the turning point of history. Have you ever wondered why we don't celebrate Christmas in a barn? Allow me to tell you the legacy of Christmas. Christmas as we know it was first celebrated in AD 200, almost 200 years after Jesus was born in a manger. The word mass means a gathering. There were public masses, religious masses, and political masses. The church world adopted this term and began to celebrate different types of religious masses. In AD 200, it was determined that a mass should be held to celebrate the birth of Christ. So the first Christ mass was held since no one knew the exact date Christ was born and was decoded in A.D. 354 to hold Mass on December the 25th. Before this time, Christ Masses were held any time churches wanted to recognize and celebrate the birth of Christ. These worship services in the remembrance of Christ were the first Christmas celebrations. Many have shortened the words Christmas to Xmas. This would have never been tolerated many years ago. The Christ Mass became one of the holiest of all Masses. Soon prominent people began to make the gathering more meaningful. People like St. Nicholas of Myra, the original St. Nick. St. Nicholas of Myra, A.D. 345. St. Nicholas of Myra was a 4th century bishop who traveled through Asia Minor giving gifts to orphans and widows. He was known as the Bishop of Charity. He wore the standard bishop robe of his day. It was red representing the blood of Christ and trimmed in white fur for the wintry climate. The white of the old bishop's robe represented the purity of Christ. As was customary for the bishop in his day, his transportation was a sleigh pulled by a reindeer. Does any of this sound familiar? St. Nicholas was indeed a real man who spent his life helping the poor, especially orphan children. One interesting true story to his credit is the story of a farmer who couldn't pay his debts. The farmer was scheduled to sell his three daughters to pay his creditors. Each evening in the fourth century wintry climate, the people of the house would take off their socks and hang them by the fireplace to dry. St. Nicholas walked behind the house that was dug into the ground and dropped a gold nugget down the chimney. He hoped to find the gold nugget and pay off his debt. Instead, 
the nugget bounced into one of the stockings hung by the fire to dry. The next morning, when putting on her socks, her stockings, one of his daughters discovered a miracle in her sock. News of this spread quickly, and many checked their stockings every morning to see if good fortune had become them. Hanging stockings by the chimney to dry, once a dreaded chore, became exciting. There was new hope. of symbols to celebrate the Christ Mass. In AD 680, St. Boniface, a German bishop, was walking through a field in the dead of winter. He noticed that the trees, grass, and other plant life were leafless and lifeless. Suddenly he saw an evergreen tree. It was the only tree in the field that looked alive. He also noticed that the tree formed an arrow pointing upward. This prompted him to fall on his knees and worship. Since it was impossible to bring everyone to the field, he decided to bring the tree to them. He took this magnificent symbol of life back to the church to illustrate how God brings life in the midst of winter. His sermon was to, to talk of the town, and his object lesson would soon change history. For once, they talked about the uh, ingenious tree sermon. The idea caught on to, until soon others decided to bring evergreen trees into their homes as a reminder to worship God. They called these trees Tannenbaums, a German word meaning evergreen tree, as the years passed, the whole church world brought evergreens into their homes during the winter season. Years later, the Protestant reformer Martin Luther was admiring a starlight night and motivated him to worship in such a way he tried to duplicate, duplicate it by putting candles on his tree. This, this shrine of inspiration prompted worship and all who admired it. It wasn't long before many people throughout Germany lit their trees to fill their homes with the inspiration of a starlight night. The winter equinox. During the same season, celebrated by celebrating the beginning of spring, the appearance of mistletoe on trees was thought to mark the beginning of spring. So a massive celebration was held on December 22nd by decorating mistletoe. But the celebration of the Christ Mass with its lit tree was so adored that soon the winter equinox celebration became diminished in the life of the true life of the world. Yeah. 
Christmas carols, and the word carol actually comes from an Italian word, carolare. That means a traditional dance routine of circular movements similar to a modern-day square dance. The carolare was performed during celebrations and festivals, especially during the Christmas season. Italian shepherds would come from the hillsides into the towns and dance the carolare at Christmas to spread joy from house to house. It was a favorite holiday event for most of Italy. As time went on, people began to write lyrics to this music, describing the dances. The verses became the first Christmas carols. The streets were filled with music, dance, and festivity about the Christ child who was born in a manger to redeem mankind. Now, one of these Christmas uh, carolers is the 12 Days of Christmas, a favorite Christmas carol of our day. And this song, however, is a bit strange. Would anyone want to give their true love 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10 lords a leaping, 9 ladies dancing, 8 maids a milking, 7 swans a swimming, 6 geese a laying, 5 golden rings, 4 calling birds, 3 French hens, 2 turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree? Would any of y'all really want 50 people jumping and dancing and playing the drums and pipes? Five golden, well, five golden rings. <laughs> 23 birds for Christmas. What is the true meaning behind this song? It originated in 1558 in a Catholic schoolroom, and in those days, no one was permitted to own a Bible or study the scriptures. To speak of scriptures was forbidden unless they were taught by a priest or a qualified instructor. However, it was still important for each person to understand the faith of the church. One creative priest, probably like Brother Sprattlin, came up with a system of creating songs with hidden meanings in them. The hidden meaning of this song brings new life to God. The true love of this song is none other than God himself. And the me, who is represented as the receiver of the gifts, is anyone who is saved. The list of gifts symbolizes various parts of the Christian faith. <clears throat> the partridge in a pear tree is actually a savior hanging on a tree or cross, the original implication was that the partridge was injured and stranded in the tree. Two turtle doves reminded them of two testaments, old and new, which belonged together like two turtle doves. Three French hens reminded them of the three greatest virtues of Christian faith, or of Christianity, faith, hope, and love. Four calling birds represented the four gospels that call out declaring the good news. Five golden rings were actually the golden threads that weaved the first five books of the Bible together. Giving us what is the, what was that word? <laughs> I did not know. Oh. And a talk. I don't know. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Six geese a laying represents the six days of creation. The laying of an egg was the universal symbol of new life and procreation. Seven swans of swimming were the seven gifts of the spirit. We understand there to be nine today, but in their day, the gifts of, the wisdom, of wisdom, knowledge, and the gifts of tongues and of interpretation of tongues were combined, leaving a total of seven. The swimming reminded them of the Holy Spirit's symbol of water. Eight maids of milking symbolized the eight beatitudes taught by Christ. The beatitudes had to do with their servitude, and thus the milking maid gave them the ideal semblance. Oh my goodness, there's so much. <laughs> Nine Ladies Dancing represents the nine aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit produces a, a life of love, joy, and peace, as portrayed in the Ladies' Festive Dance. Ten Lords of Leaping represented the Ten Commandments. Laws were heralded by lords, thus reminding them of the Ten Laws of God. Eleven Pipers Piping represented the eleven faithful disciples, which Christ led like a piper leads his group. They piped the good news to the world in the song of faithful living. And lastly, 12 drummers drumming represented the 12 points to the Apostles' Creed. Thus, if the song were sung according to its true meanings, 
the words would have to be changed, which we would consider on the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12 rules of living, 11 disciples, 10 great commandments, 9 fruits of the Spirit, 8 beatitudes, 7 gifts of the Spirit, 6 days of creation, 5 books of law, 4 books of gospel, 3 Christian virtues, 2 testaments, and a Savior hanging on a tree. And we will be singing, my goodness, the 12 days of Christmas. You're going to need to stand for this one. Whenever I tell you that we need your help, we need your help. Okay, so we want you to sing so loud so you cannot hear us. All right, is everybody ready? Okay. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love came to me, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love came to me, three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love came to me, Four calling birds, three branches, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings. Four calling birds, three branches, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six geese a laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings.
I need to catch my breath. <laughs> So the Christ mass season continues to grow in 8700 and beyond. Holly. <laughs> the tradition spread around the world. The Christ mass was now a part of the entire church world. In England, Christians noticed that the holly was green like the evergreen during the winter. Soon the English church began to hang holly on their doors. When asked about the new strange, tradition, strange decoration, they gave this explanation. The holly on the front door is in the shape of thorns placed on the head of Christ. The holly thorns and the red berries provided the inspirational note that Christ was born to die for the sins of man. The red berries gave the appearance of drops of blood on the crown of holly thorns. When holly wasn't available, various types of evergreen branches were used to form the crown of thorns and red ribbons were used to symbolize the flow of blood from the Savior's head. This was the beginning of what we now call a Christmas wreath. Candles in the window. The night Jesus was born, a star pointed the way to the baby in the manger. This babe was the hope of the world. Soon Christmas became the season of hope. The words of the angels continued to ring in the hearts of men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. It soon became apparent that the best way to glorify God and be a peacemaker was through gestures of goodwill. So Christians began placing candles in their windows to light the way for the less fortunate of their community. A candle in the window was a message that anyone could receive food at that house. Imagine the hope of someone wandering in the night, cold, lost, hungry, when suddenly a light appeared in a window. It was like the voice of an old friend saying, come in and eat. We've been expecting you. The ringing of Christmas bells. Throughout history, bells have been used as an alarm system. It was customary to put bell towers in places where the public gathered. These meeting halls were usually at city halls or churches. The alarm was sounded at emergency town meetings, fires, or special announcements. When the bells rang, people left their homes and came to the town meeting hall or the church. The church decided to sound the alarm at midnight on the eve of Christ's Mass. The alarm was to alert the devil that the church was alive and well in serving a risen Savior. The monotone bells didn't play music or chimes for this occasion. Instead, they rang ominous warning to the devil that the next day, Christians all over the world would gather to celebrate the one who triumphed over evil and won the victory for mankind. Yeah. Giving and receiving gifts. Of all Christmas customs, the origin of giving and receiving gifts is easiest to understand. Gifts were brought to the Christ child by the wise men. Their gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The practice began as people bought their own gifts to the Christ mass, and they would give the finest gifts of the, to the church as an act of worship. The gifts were then distributed to the poor of the community. Latter, this act of love was followed by giving <coughs> gifts to loved ones and relatives. At first, it was only one gift per person. But then soon the retailers saw that this act of love was an opportunity for profit. The exploitation of this practice, along with greed, soon turned this act of giving to Christ and others into a fiasco of selfishness and materialism. For many today, giving gifts is more of an obligation than an act of love. And for most, is anything but a Christian practice. Okay, they're going to begin to light the candles for you. For our next song that we're going to be singing, we're going to have the lights turned off, so we're going to ask everyone to please remain in your seat. If possible. But as they're doing this, if you stop and think what Sister Mary just read, 
Christmas is a time to show love. Yeah. And Christmas really started out as a way of letting our light shine for Jesus. Doing what Christ had taught the disciples to do. And that was if you saw someone hungry, you gave them something to eat. If you saw somebody cold, you gave them a place to get warmed up. And so the list goes on. What happened if this Christmas and we turned it into a day of love, acts of love, what would you do? What could you do to your neighbor? What would be different on your Christmas day? Because this is not all about us. It's all actually all about Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that I can celebrate Christmas. Aren't you? I'm going to ask you if you would to stand with us again. Talk about to use your camera to read the words. Christmas Day, to go back and find that candle, and understand that the origin of that candle was whenever they placed it in their window, mm -hmm. and it said that my house is available if you're hungry. My house is available if you need a place to stay. Get out of the cold. We're here for you. If this could 
really be the message, not just from the church, but every Christian person. I'm available to help those that are in need. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know there's people out there today that's playing the system, but hey, there's people out there that really are hungry. Yes. There's people yeah. out there today that really need someone to bring them in out of the cold. Remember several years ago, we had a, uh, a gentleman that uh, had come by mom's and dad, mom and dad's house. And he said he was hungry. And we said, well, all that we have right now is a sandwich. And if you give us just a few minutes, we'll fix it for you. Mm -hmm. How glad he was just to get a piece of bread, two pieces of bread yes. with something on it. Mm -hmm. He was really hungry. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen others whenever you say, well, let me get you something to eat. When you go back outside, they're gone because all they wanted was money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are really people out there that can use your help. And if you'll pray, God will lead you to the one. So let's let our light shine. Can we just purpose in our heart that this next year we're going to let our light shine? And we're not going to let it shine until people who come by and pat us on the back. For Jesus said, that's no better than the Pharisees are. He said, but if you do good to those who can't pay you back, that's what Christ came to do. Look what he done for you and I. With the legacy of Christmas, Christ is Christmas. Christmas is all about Christ. Amen. And without Christ, there is no Christmas. The legacy of Christmas must be told. It must be practiced. It must be celebrated. Otherwise, our family gatherings and gift exchanges become no more than a day off of work, increased debt, and a festival of selfishness. So when we tell the story of Christmas, let's tell it right. Yeah. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. To you and I, even today, this is still great, great tidings. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, the first Christmas. There had to be just an excitement that cannot be described. The shepherds arriving. Mary no doubt looked up and thought, what are you doing here? Let me tell you what I'm doing here. We were minding our own business whenever we were interrupted by angels. And they told us that the Son of God had been born. I would only imagine that Mary could only just keep pondering all these things in her heart. She knew that an angel had visited with her. She knew that child was special. She knew that child was the son of God. And here is another confirmation. The angels were rejoicing. How much more should you and I rejoice? Unto the angels, he could not be their savior, but unto you and I, he is our savior. Yes. And I thank God because that we can experience something today the angels cannot. Finally, the long-awaited morning arrives. The house is glittering with the expectation of relatives arriving. The tree stands like a monument of joy in its special spot. The seasonal centerpiece becomes a meeting place for gift exchanges, hugs, laughter, the wonderful element of surprise. 
Stockings are hung by the chimney with care, and candles with eloquency line the windows as the old house adorns her best dress for Christmas. The morning alarm clock is rivaled by excited, pajama-clad children jumping into their parents' bed. They convince Dad and Mom that Santa visited the family while the whole house slept. The morning culminates with the opening of presents, and with the rattling of pots and pans as family members stuff themselves with Christmas turkey, hams, and all the trimmings, and the year's tastiest sweets. But more importantly than the presents is his presence. More than any any gift that you'll ever receive, if you can just be in the presence yes. of the Lord. Amen. That's going to be the greatest thing. Returning Christ at Christmas enhances family traditions. The legacy of Christmas is quite simple. There is no Christmas without Christ. Okay? If I, if I can just be permitted for a moment, I realize that so many times we are so quick to tell all of our children or to tell a lot of children, and some parents get upset with you whenever you tell the kids there is no such thing as Santa. Why not tell them where a Santa really originated from? Why not tell them that it was not at North Pole, but it was because that somebody had the love of God on their hearts, in their hearts, for people. And his name was St. Nick, St. Nicholas. And he really loved the Lord because that he loved people and he went around giving gifts to the poor. Why not tell them the truth about Christmas? Why not tell them what the, the tree, the evergreen, really stands for? Because in the deadest part of the winter, Christ is still alive and well. And the arrow still points up toward heaven. Right? I've never seen a Christmas tree with the arrow pointing down. It's all pointed up. Tell them what the lights are symbolic about. Tell them what the wreath represents, the crown of thorns. Yeah. Tell them about what Christmas is really all about. Hey, you've got a story to tell. Yeah. Let me encourage you, don't just rush into exchanging gifts without, first of all, telling them about Christ. Yeah. Because Christ is still the reason for the season. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, we're going to move outside. But just before we do, we're going to pray. And uh, we, we've asked people to bring ornaments to hang on the tree. And ladies, tell me if I'm wrong. You have some ornaments out there if they would like to. If you did not bring one and you would like to put your name on one to hang on the tree, uh, you can run by out there and see one of these ladies that's going to be out there with them. And then we're going to finish decorating the tree. And then we're going to turn all the lights on. I, I believe that if you will just look at the tree and, and realize what's around us, that you can make it a moment where that you can celebrate Christ tonight. Yeah. Okay? And then we're going to have a time of fellowship. Now, I don't want you just to, to run out and run home. I want you to stick around. Let's get to know one another. And I want to say from the depths of my heart as pastor, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate our guests that are with us tonight. And we just want you to be touched and blessed also. Make yourself at home. And if there's anything that we can do to serve you, to help you out in this time, please don't hesitate to call us. Will you stand with us? And I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go outside. Father, I want to thank you for sending the greatest gift that we've ever had, and that is Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for being the gift of our salvation, the one who made the way possible that we could, we could approach a holy God. Even our life was full of sin, but Jesus, you made it possible. And I thank you for that today. I thank you for the gift of salvation. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of our children, of our grandchildren. I thank you to God for all the blessings that you've given unto us in this past year. That, oh God, that we may love you and show our love unto you in this Christmas season by loving other people. Remember your words, Lord, for you said as you have done this unto others, you have done it unto me. So, Lord, I can love you by loving on other people. Lord, will you bless our time of fellowship and, and all that God. I just ask you, Lord, today, Father, please, that God just go with us. And Lord, we're fair not to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There are three pits of fire out there, so we ask you to please watch your kids. We don't want anyone to be burnt.
I want them to see the tree. It's live. the signal. There it goes. Holly, I'm losing my signal. I've got to stay close. I'll have to stay over here. I'm losing my signal. Okay. Yeah, stay close to the church. Oh, that's good. You can see it from there. Yeah. Oh, we are live? Yeah. Oh, we are live. Oh, right there. Oh, yes. Can I put it right here? Oh, you're like getting back on. Yeah, I turned them on. Okay. The burger keeps uh, turning off. We're still live streaming. We will be lighting the trees so be patient with your gear. It's raining. Ow! Yeah. One, two, three. 